learning phrase representations using recurrent neural network encoder decoder by Bumik Agarg. There are massive number of languages spoken throughout the world. Machine translation by human involves a lot of labor and is expensive. Communication between people speaking different languages has become easy through the use of translation APIs and software. The AI translation system of Google has known to approach the accuracy of humans. This shows how effective machine translation is using neural networks. Translating from one language to another, word by word, does not produce meaningful sentences, thus a condition is applied to the generated words to produce something meaningful. To take into consideration the affect of words before and after a particular word, a machine translation model is developed using recurrent neural networks. Here is Google's animation, which shows how the parts of a Chinese sentence are detected and their relevance to the words to be translated weighed. What is a neural network? If you look at the picture, you should be able to tell that it is a giraffe, despite it being strangely fat. We recognize images and objects instantly, even if these images are presented in a form that is different from what we have seen before. We do this with the 80 billion neurons in our brain working together to transmit information. This remarkable system of neurons is the inspiration behind artificial neural networks. Now let us look at the technical definition. Neural networks are made up of a number of interconnected nodes that are neurons. These neurons are arranged in the form of layers which contain an activation function. Patterns are presented to the network via the input layer, which communicates to one or more hidden layers where the actual processing is done via a system of weighted connections. The hidden layers then link to an output layer. What makes deep learning deep? Neural networks started with two layers, input and output. Dot, but a network with two layers cannot even simulate a very simple function. To overcome this problem, hidden layers were added between the input and output layers. The simple improvement is amazing because it fundamentally changes neural network that in theory neural network can solve any problems. However, in practice, a model with one hidden layer is very difficult to train when the problem is complex. We call models with zero or one hidden layer shallow model because of the limitation of problem domains that they can apply. With the increasing computer power, researchers could try to add more hidden layers to observe their impacts. To their surprise, models with more hidden layers perform much better for some very complex voice recognition and image classification problems. In deep network, multiple higher hidden layers can code reuse lower layer features. Deep Learning Hypothesis It is known that human perception is fast. Also, neurons fire at most 100 times a second. Humans solve perception in 0.1 seconds. Thus our brain neurons fire 10 times. So the hypothesis says that whatever the human can do in 0.1 seconds, a big 10-layer neural network can do it too. A recurrent neural network is a normal deep model of neural networks with loops in them that allow information to be carried across neurons while reading an input. They are especially useful with sequential data because each neuron or unit can use its internal memory to maintain information about the previous input. This is great because in cases of language, I had washed my house is much more different than I had my house washed. This allows the network to gain a deeper understanding of the statement. As in the picture, the input in English is fed into an encoder which then produces an encoded representation. This encoded representation are vectors which are then fed into a decoder, which is also a recurrent neural network to produce the translated text. There are two enhancements used. First being a tension mechanism, it involves the decoder weighting different parts of the intermediary representations so it focuses on certain parts at certain time steps. The other being bidirectional recurrent neural network, when we represent an input sequence as a single representation vector, it tends to be biased towards later parts of the sequence. 
we can push back against this a bit by reading the sequence both forwards and backwards. Quiescent data with start and end symbols at the starting and end of each sentence. It marked the beginning and end of each sentence. The characters used as start and end symbols were symbols that were not present in the data. The input sentences are variable in length which were padded before inputting them to the network. Length of the longest sentence in the dataset was determined to set it as the length of the vector that would be used. Tokenizers convert words to integers. Each integer represents a word. As the length of each sentence in the dataset is variable, padding was used to make the length of the input vector same. First the longest sentence in the data was found and the input vector length was fixed as that length. Padding was done in the form of integers. 0 represents padding. 1 represented the start token and 2 represented the end token. RNNs were used in order to not treat the inputs independently but instead memorize and use the previous computations. The encoder consists of an LSTM cell. LSTM cell takes one word at a time. It finds the probabilities of the probable next words in that sequence. The memory state of the network is initiated with a vector of zeros. It is updated after each word has been processed. When the model was bidirectional, there were two LSTMs which were concatenated later. The output was a probability distribution over the target vocabulary. The softmax layer ensured that each row sums to one, like in A. Proper probability distribution There are a few things to know about LSTMs. First, can LSTMs reconstruct their input? The answer is. It can, and it can do it very easily. It just does it effortlessly. The LSTM cell makes decisions about what to store, and when to allow reads, writes and erasures, via gates that open and close. The images show the accuracy and loss for first and last 10 epochs. The model was trained for 100 epochs. A better accuracy is expected with epochs equals 250. Due to time constraint, epochs were set to 100. The dataset was comparatively small. A larger set would have led to a better training model and more accuracy. There were four models compared. The four variational models were First, bidirectional one hot encoded. Second, embedding. Third, one hot encoded. Fourth, one hot embedding. The left image shows the graph for a loss with each epoch. Loss is least for bidirectional one hot encoded. The right image shows the graph for accuracy with each epoch. Accuracy is maximum for bidirectional one hot encoded. This shows that bidirectional one hot encoded was the best. An accuracy of 70.81% was achieved by training a bidirectional one hot encoded model. Now we will have a look at the code which was made. Keras was used with TensorFlow as backend to implement the model. Dataset was limited to 80,000 in order to avoid memory issues. Other variables like number of epochs were 100, batch size was 128. The function hot vectors generates one hot vectors from token sequences. The function target vector generates one hots for target sequences. Function get text converts long sentences to short sequences. In the function build model, if else statements form the four type of model variations with bidirectional as true or false and one hot as true or false. Function batch generation is generating batches for batch processing. Other functions are all well commented and can be gone through in the code. The function translate predicts the translated output of a text. The following commands were written in Python notebook to test the output of the algorithm. The figure shows the result. Encoder data is the input, decoder data is the target and the output of the model comes from the function translate. If you see, here caret is the start token and dollar is the end token. The first line I took the bus back is the input in English. Second line of the output is the target translated text. 
and the third line is the actual output that the model produced. That was an overview of the model that was made for machine translation using deep learning. I hope you liked the video. Thank you.